In this video, we're going to learn how to do some useful date calculations. We're going to learn how to calculate the quarter, the fiscal quarter, the fiscal month, and the fiscal year. And if you need a little bit more of a background on how date and time work in Excel, you can always refer back to my Excel date and time masterclass on my YouTube channel. It's a long video that explains how date and time work in Excel. I'll leave the link below in the description. And before we start, I need to mention that when performing fiscal calculations, we're going to assume that the fiscal year starts in April. I know that the fiscal year can vary from one place or business to another, but you can always tweak the formulas to match your business's fiscal year. So with that being said, let's get started. So the first calculation we're going to do here is a simple calculation, which is getting the month number for the calendar year out of a date. And this is simply done using the month function here. So equals month, and then you select the date, and then you're going to be able to extract the number for the calendar month out of your date. Now to calculate the fiscal month, let's actually try to reach the logic for calculating the fiscal month. So I've created a table here on the right hand side. And as you can see here, I've started the month column with April because April is going to be the first fiscal month. April is the first month on the fiscal year, right? So if we actually write a one here on the fiscal month, and then we just fill the series here, we just drag down and then click on this square here and then do fill series. You can see here that there is a pattern on the first nine fiscal months, which is that they are three months behind the calendar month, right? So fiscal month equals calendar month minus three, but that is excluding the first three calendar months here because the first calendar month, which is January is actually the 10th fiscal month. So we can actually create a formula that can apply this rule except for the first three calendar months. And to do that, we can write equals if, and the logical test here is that the month is less than four, right? So it's on the first three. So if it is less than four, if it is one of the first three calendar months, then we can actually use the choose function here. So for the index number for the choose, we're going to make it K5. And then the values we're going to choose from are 10 and 11 and 12. And this logic will be applied only if it is less than four. So if the calendar month is either one or two or three, it's going to apply 10 or 11 or 12. So this is actually the exception from the rule, which is that the fiscal month is equal to calendar month minus three. So we built that exception. So otherwise make it the calendar month minus three. So this way we're able to calculate the fiscal month. So if you press enter, and then drag the formula down, you can see here that we get the correct results. And if you don't know how the choose function works, you can always refer to the video about the choose function on my YouTube channel. I'll leave you the link below in the description, but the choose function is very simple. You give it an index number and then you give it a number of choices and then it will make a choice out of those choices based on the number you will give it. So here, if the number is one, it will choose the 10. If the number is two, it will choose the 11. If the number is three, it will choose the 12. This is very simply how the choose function works. So let's write the formula again here equals if the month is less than four, then choose the index number is gonna be the number for the month. And then we're gonna choose between 10 and 11 and 12. Otherwise, we're gonna do the calendar month minus three you can see here that we're able to get our fiscal month. And as we mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is assuming that our fiscal year starts in April. Now let's try to calculate the quarter. So a very easy way to do it is using the choose function. So we could write equals choose, and then the index number would be our calendar month number. And then the choices we're going to choose from are going to be one, 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 and then two, 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 and then three, 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 then four, four, four. So as you can see here, we've given the choose function 12 choices, the same number of our calendar months, and it's gonna choose based on the index number of the month. So for the first three months, it's gonna give it quarter one, for the next three months, it's gonna give them quarter two, and the following three months, quarter three, 
and so on and so forth. So if you press enter and drag the formula down, you can see here that we get the correct results. And the advantage of this formula is that it's very easy to remember, very easy formula indeed. Another way to calculate the quarter is using the ceiling function. And the ceiling function can round values up to the nearest multiple of a certain number. So let's see quickly how the ceiling function works here. So if I write equals ceiling, you can see here we've got two variants. We've got a legacy function from Excel 2007 called ceiling, and we've got a new one here called ceiling.math. They are both the same, except that ceiling.math has an extra argument or input that is used for rounding negative numbers, which we are not gonna use, basically, because we're not gonna round any negative numbers. Maybe we can create a video about rounding numbers in Excel, another a separate video let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like me to do okay so back to the ceiling function here so we're going to use ceiling.math and then the number we're going to round we can give it for example four and ask it to round it up to the nearest multiple of three so the significance here is going to be three so if we round four up to the nearest multiple of three so the nearest multiple of three when rounding up four can be six we want to round the four up so we need to go to the multiple of three up from the four, right? So if we press enter, we should get a six here. If we do that on the one, for example, so equals ceiling dot math, and then the number is going to be one and the significance is going to be three. So this is the multiple that we're going to round up to. So what's the nearest multiple of three that we can round one up to? This is going to be actually three right? Because the nearest multiple of three to round one up is going to be three. If we do that on a seven, for example, so ceiling.math here, and then the number is going to be seven, and then significance is still going to be three here. So to round seven up to the nearest multiple of three, so what's the multiple of three that is greater than seven? So three by one is three, that's still not greater than seven. Three by two is six, is still not greater than seven. But three by three is nine, and this is greater than seven. So this is gonna be the nearest multiple of three to round up seven, which is gonna be nine. Okay, so let's apply the ceiling function here. So equal ceiling dot math here, and then the number is gonna be the calendar month number, and then the significance is gonna be a three. And if you apply that, to our calendar month number and we drag the formula down here, you can see here that there is a pattern here. The first three months are giving us a result of three and then the second three months are giving us a result of six and then the following three months are being rounded up to the next multiple of three which is nine and so on and so forth so actually there is a pattern here because the answer that we want for january we want the answer to be a one and for april we want the answer to be a two and for august for example we want the answer to be a three so you can see here there is a pattern which is that if we divide this by a three we're gonna get the right result right so if you divide it by three and drag the formula down you can see here january is in the first quarter that's right april is in the second quarter and so on and so forth so you can see here that if we use the ceiling function to round up to the nearest multiple of three and then divide it by three we get the right answer now on to calculating the fiscal quarter so you can calculate the fiscal quarter using a lookup where you would create a lookup table here containing two columns. The first column contains the calendar quarter start month. So when does the calendar quarter start? So the first quarter starts at the first month and then the second quarter starts on the fourth month and then the third quarter on the calendar year here starts on the seventh month, which is July, and then the fourth quarter starts on the 10th month of the year. And then the fiscal quarter, the corresponding fiscal quarter here. So in January, the corresponding fiscal quarter is four, and it's gonna be the same thing on February and March. And then in April, the corresponding fiscal quarter is one, because April is the first month on the fiscal quarter, and that goes the same for May and June, and so on and so forth. And you can do a VL lookup for example using approximate matches so equals vlookup and then your lookup value is actually going to be the month and the table array where you're going to do the lookup is going to be this table here and then the column index number is going to be two because we're going to get the value from the second column and the range lookup is going to be actually an approximate match and what an approximate match does is that it goes down through the table until it hits the higher value and then 
it gives us the value corresponding to the row before the higher value. So for example here for month number one it will go down through the table until it hits the higher value. So it will go down through the table here one is not the higher value and then it will hit four and then give us the value for the row before four which is four okay and then if the value is a four for example it will go down through the table until it hits the upper value and then it will give us the value for the row before the row containing the upper value which is one and please note that the table needs to be sorted in an ascending order in order to be able to do an approximate match okay so you have to have your table sorted in an ascending order on the first column here so if you press enter and we drag the formula down, you can see here that we're able to get the fiscal quarters correctly. Another way to calculate the fiscal quarter is using the ceiling function. Now, after calculating the fiscal quarter, you can see here that there is a pattern, which is that the fiscal quarter is usually less than the quarter by one, right? So the fiscal quarter is less than the calendar quarter by one, except for the first three months, except for January, February, and March where the fiscal quarter is a four and the calendar quarter is a one. So we can use the ceiling function combined with an if condition here. So we can write our if condition, first of all, for the exception, which is that if the month is less than four, right? So for the first three months, then the fiscal quarter is gonna be a four, which is the case here. And then otherwise, we can use the ceiling function the same way we've used it to calculate the calendar quarters, right? So ceiling, and we're going to put the month here and we're going to calculate it as multiples of three and divided by three as well. We've done this when calculating the calendar quarter. And as I told you, the pattern is that the fiscal quarter is one less than the calendar quarter when the month is not on the first three months. So we can subtract a one here and we can close the brackets. And if you press enter, sure enough, we get the correct result. So you can see here, we've shown two ways to calculate the fiscal quarter. Another way as well that you can do it is using the choose function. So you could do equals choose and then the first argument will be the month and then you can do 444, 111, 222, 333. And that's an easy way to do it as well. Now we're gonna calculate the year, which is done simply using the year function here. So you can use the year function on the date to get the year for that particular date and this is an easy calculation for the fiscal year though if we think about it for a moment the first three months of the calendar year would actually belong to the previous fiscal year so the first three months in 2017 would belong to the fiscal year of 2016 because the fiscal year of 2016 will start in April 2016 and would end in March 2017. Otherwise, the rest of the months of the calendar year, so any month starting from April till December 17, will belong to the same year as the fiscal year or as the corresponding fiscal year. So the months from April until December will still belong to the fiscal year of 2017. So we can actually subtract a one just in case the month is less than four or in case the month belongs to the first three months, right? So we can write equals the year minus and we can subtract to one in case the month is less than a four. So how can we do that? We can actually do a simple Boolean operation, a simple true and false. So we're going to compare the month and we're going to ask if it is less than four. And this operation will give us a true or false. However, because we have a minus sign here, this will transform it into a mathematical operation and will transform the true into a one and the false into a zero. And so we will subtract a one in case this statement is true, in case the month is actually less than a four. If we press enter, you can see here, it will actually subtract a one in case the statement is true. So in case the month is less than four, if we drag the formula down, sure enough, we get the right answer whenever the month is less than four or belongs to the first three calendar months, we subtract a one, but if it is not, we're in the same fiscal year. And it doesn't subtract because this would give us a false and then the minus sign would subtract a zero. So we would still be on the same year.
Okay guys, so that's it for today's tutorial. I hope it was useful for you. And this tutorial would be useful in case you build a dashboard, for example, and you need to dissect your data by fiscal year or fiscal month or quarter. So that would be useful in that case. And speaking of dashboards, I've got an Excel dashboards course that I teach. If you'd like to check it out, the link will be below in the description. And let me know guys below in the comments, which way or option you like the most when performing these calculations to so which formula you liked the most and if there is another formula that you can use to achieve the same objective let me know of that formula write it down below in the comments as well thanks guys for watching i'll see you on the next video if you found this video helpful press the like button subscribe to the channel for more videos and share it with your friends if you have any questions please leave them in the comments section below you can download the example workbook and more free resources through the links below in the description also please check my excel courses links below as well thanks for watching i'll see you on the next one